Hi, chat. How's this framed? How's this looking? Okay, good. Uh, oh, hey. there we go. I was just unmuted. Oh. I'd, I'd unmuted you, but I still needed to unmute you again. Um, there we go. The stream desperately wants to mute me. This. I don't blame it. This is this is a great start. Uh, yeah. That's a, that's a fun mask. Well, that was. <laughs> yes. It, it, it went on a face about thirty seconds ago. So. Yes. Um, this is this is uh, a proper Venetian mask from venetia <laughs> yeah from venice and i love it Wonderful. i've had it for a number of years and it's great um yeah hi what's up everybody i'm i'm Welcome. sam this is lucy and you are listening to geliteracy where we're here i'm looking up there the where? camera's here I'm, I'm looking but lucy's up there so i'm kind of you know between the two of you so um <clears throat> yeah this this is a bit last minute. We it's, forgot we were doing this. We we like we've been talking about it all last week. Like, yeah, you said okay for like a Halloween stream on Monday. Yeah, sure, it'd be good. Yeah, yeah, it'd be fine. I obviously have had to cancel a number of reading streams lately because, as will no doubt make itself evident when I start having to ride the mute button, I'm still like coughing and congested, and it's kind of gross. Like in in this context, it's not quite so bad. It's not such an imposition because, firstly, like you have other things to look at beyond literally just a looping GIF. And listen to someone read. Like, me speaking isn't the whole point of us being here, I'm sorry to say. Um, Lucy is oh. also here as well and can, you know, speak and things. Um, but, yeah, there's, there, is, there are more components to this than that, so it's, it's not quite so bad. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going be, gonna to be making the mute button work this evening. Um, and then, like, an hour ago, it was like, hey, are you ready with a tweet? Well, half an hour ago, Lisa was like, hey, are you ready with the tweet for tonight? I said, yeah, sure, I've got one ready. I'll post it at eight. Oh, we go live at eight, don't we? <laughs> Not nine. Um, okay, well, don't, I mean, mm, okay, sure. Um, and, yeah, so we're both kind of rushing to actually start at eight o'clock. Um, I might have, like, cracked another tooth because this is my thing now. Um, yeah. So that's that's good. That's just, if you see me, like, pulling a face, that's just me, you know, feeling out. I mean, I definitely have just feeling out the the scope of the damage. Um, so yeah, this and which obviously that is can, the true horror, as you can tell from Lucy's face, and that is something she does not like, uh, no. like an actual genuine phobia level of do not like. So we don't make do jokes about like that. Going wrong. No, <laughs> no, um, it's just very unfortunate that I happen to be afflicted by this thing. So yeah, um, it's almost like it was planned. Yeah. This is spooky season. Oh, um, what else have we got? I've also got a headache, just a little bit of a headache. My hair is a mess. I'm completely disheveled and unruly this evening. Um, I'm drifting out of shot because I'm on, I'm in the studio, uh, in a studio setup. Um, Lucy's video keeps dropping into the low, low bit. Yes, rate. So it that, does. That might, I don't My know. My internet if, hates me. I was going to say, I don't know if that's your internet or mine because the, the internet out here is on average very fast. Um, but that basically means it goes between really fast and no, uh, and just kind of swings quite wildly. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of a thing. Um, but yeah, we thought it would be a shame. Hi chat. Hello. <laughs> I hope you're all well. I'm going to take this mask off because it's driving me mad. Yeah, okay, fair. It's slipping down um, my face. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, like considering how many how many ghost stories and things we read on here, we thought it'd be a real shame to just let Halloween go by without without even like touching it, um, marking it in some way. Yeah. So you get us. I don't even have a spooky book out here to read. Um, any like anything uh, anything from? I did bring my oh, copy of. Dracula this means I can. Here. But nice. um, I can show I can show our awesome our awesome uh, mammoth book of ghost stories. Oh yes, yeah, it's, we can get that on on screen. Um, <laughs> Look at this. You know how I so this is the, the bat I've been that reading keeps getting from mentioned for the last few front. weeks. It's on the front. Yeah, so cool. Uh, I've no idea whether this is actually in shot. Is this in shot? Sure. Oh, this book smell it smells amazing. Half that book. It's a proper old book. Hmm. Half that book, yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just really cool. And the inside as well. The thing as well. Oh yeah. Which so, video compression between Discord and Twitch will no, just look like it won't like. No. Uh, hold it a bit closer. It'll... My camera might not. Uh, focus. Cameras be damned. 
Um, yeah, it's all it's all that. Oh, yeah, there's lots of little things in it. Yeah, it's very cool. Mm. There's like spooky faces in there and stuff. And then the other one that's like it's oh the the sea stories part the. Uh, I guess out of the same collection as Fifty Great Sea Stories. Mm. It's got a ship on the front. It's very, very cool. Yeah. And yeah. That's focus gets so eventually. Similar kind of. Yeah. And that's got a cool cover that's like ships. Yeah. Which I don't know if it focuses. It's, but yeah. It's kind of getting there. Yeah. They're very cool books. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I now kind of want to find more of them. Yeah. <laughs> like what? What? What was this series? Yeah. Um, I doubt that. I doubt that store will have any more. But yeah, you never know. Yeah. Uh, also, hello, Andy. You also, almost hello, Hat, and hello, Lynn. Yes, hello. Um, just sorry, just seeing Andy say you almost forgot this was today. I mm, so did we. I don't know that we really said that it was today. So um, I, it it caught us as much by surprise as anyone else. I think in yeah, yeah. As, as as we spent like the opening. How long have we been live? Um, yeah, let's say it's opening 10 minutes, just discussing how disheveled and last minute we're both feeling and this all is. Um, yeah. yeah, we just kind of more or less rocks up, hit the go live button and then tried to get ready in time. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I did. I have, I have mentioned it, I think, a couple of times on streams. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I guess because it's it, we haven't had the Saturday streams, it's you don't have the kind of like I, bi-weekly reminder. It's just the yeah. If I I like I I've discussed this before. Like I I need like a almost regular daily routine. Otherwise, it just it it like if it's if it slips in the routine, I will not remember to do it. And like once if I like back when I was kind of streaming most days of the week i was kind of reasonably competent at remembering everything i needed to do and kind of keeping to the times and and all the all the different bits that i needed to do you know my keyboard shortcuts and stuff when that gets down to like once a week or less oh i i struggle i it, everything just goes and falls to entropy and so yeah like doing even like regularly like trying to stream reading once a week I forget everything in between that and when it's like one of these streams which has like a slightly different layout and setup and excuse me stuff that I need to do beforehand um it just it just goes yeah. it's like I need to kind of relearn and remember it every time um so yeah I should get you a whiteboard I'd need to remember to use the whiteboard I should get you a whiteboard and write down a schedule on it for you uh... I have, and go look at the whiteboard. I have. Tr- I actually have a reminder on your phone. I don't know. Like, so I used to have a whiteboard, which I oh, did yeah, at one did, point use yeah. for that purpose. And then years later, I found out how difficult it is to clean a whiteboard that's been left with the same stuff on it for years on end. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. Uh, sure, you remember way back that this Monday stream was intended to be the second Monday of the month. That is, was, and is the general plan. Um, yes. It kind of slipped a little bit, and then for this one, we were like, "Ah, well, we might as well." Like Monday is the thirty first, so we might as well just do this on a Monday. Do so a Halloween one, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> spend most of your life perpetually unaware of what day it is. Same, yeah. Um, trying to work out whether I can get some like cool underlighting going. Okay. I remember doing that's that. That's spooky, right? I remember doing that on like a. Oh, what was the stream? It was. Well, it was a. Was me it and one and, of like yours it, and Andy's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a me and Andy horror stream. I'm trying to remember exactly what game it was we were playing. Um, but yeah, where I I like, I had my phone on. This is back in the old house, um, when I was using the I was using an ironing board as my desk, and I had my phone, like phone's light on an ironing board with like a a red glass candle holder or something perched on top of it to try and give me a bit of a red glow. It kind of works in the end, I think. Um, nice. But yeah, that was that was good. <clears throat> Lost to time now, sadly. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but yeah. yeah, I guess happy Halloween for those of you who 
those you celebrate observe. it or yeah. or Samhain or how have you actually pronounced that? There is a way of pronouncing that that I did not just do. No. Uh, for anyone in chat who knows how to pronounce that, just well please done. sound off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of course, I assume it's a Gaelic word. Therefore, it's absolutely not sounding anything like how it's written. Yeah, Steve. Um, yeah. And if we hear the doorbell go... Starwin. Ah. Oh, I no, okay. That Yeah, that does not follow any language structure that I know. Um, if yep. we hear the doorbell go, I will not be going to answer it because I have nothing oh, to give the yes. trick-or-treaters. Um, yeah. Sorry, Just kids. Just give them a ghost story. <clears throat> so if you've got two hours spare... I don't. <laughs> don't know what to tell you. Mm. Um, uh, but yeah, I hope everybody is having having a good evening day yeah. whatever and that the that the weather is i guess appropriately spooky it's chucking it down here intermittently it's, it's yeah it's been sort of on and <clears throat> off here as well like it yeah i've got like heavy downpour and then nothing and so i yeah. guess everyone's like coming out in the intervals yeah um um but but yes i hope i hope we've all been enjoying the ghost stories that have been happening this month. If you tried to buy candy for the trick or treaters yesterday, Walmart already got rid of their candy and put out Christmas trees. What? Wow. On Halloween? Wait, no, day before Halloween. That's ridiculous. Boo, like, rubbish. They're, they're getting even more like advanced on this stuff now, I guess. Yeah, that's kind of terrifying. Yeah. Uh, Hate that. Mm. Um, See, I really want a hot chocolate now, but I don't have one. Ah. Uh, and now I am sad. Oh. Um, that is the true scary thing. Yes. Um, I will also say, actually, different subject, different channel. Um, but, Andy, it's kind of mainly because you're here, but I don't know if anyone else has been to any of the uh, the John's gigs in the US. Um, but I hope that if you've gone to those, you've been having a good time. Um, mm -hmm. Andy, specifically, I will say, I'm really, really glad that you got to meet them. Um, just if nothing else, because of the like tireless work you've been doing on the the wiki and and well, all wikis. the other stuff, wikis indeed. Plural now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I'm I'm really glad that you're able to actually like meet them and and say hi and get. You said like they gave you a shout out from the stage or something. That's really cool. Um, oh, awesome! I'm, I'm glad. You, yeah, you you deserve you deserve these things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you very much for that. Say, I know it's off topic for this, but you know, we run the channel. Um, I just get a glare from Lucy later if I say the wrong thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. You probably can't see my eyes, so you uh, don't even know it's somewhere between okay. compression and the uh, like, yeah, compression artifacts. And yeah, <clears throat> oh, yeah, my internet hates me. Oh, cool. Good on. My internet is in the red. Nice. Yay. Um, yeah. No, you're you're welcome, Andy. Yeah, it's, yeah. No, when I, I when I saw that you were going, I was like, oh yeah, okay. I really hope that like they're able to, or you're able to find them, they're able to find you, and you just like meet and say hello and stuff. Because yeah, you deserve it. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, the night carers are going to be pissed off. The day staff decides oh. to decorate the front windows and doors, but it's nothing to give. Oh oh, great. Yeah, there's yeah, no. Yeah, it's always put a pumpkin out or put decorations out, and you're happy to have trick or treaters. If not, then you're not. We have no That's decorations up here, but no, still getting kids at the door. Yeah, yeah. it's quite a family-ish area, though, isn't it? Yeah, true. So I guess people are just sort of going around anywhere. Just try anything, yeah. Yeah. Not buying candy and buying truck parts instead. Nice. Yeah. I was giving a, a trumpet lesson earlier today, and uh, as I was doing it, the doorbell rang, um, and my pupil was just like, I'm not answering it. I was like, well, why? What? It's trick or treat us. Don't want to answer it. I was like, oh, okay. Do we pretend we're not here, even though you've obviously been making trumpet noises? Y yes. Then, then honest. it's like, ah, so do we try? Because if you go quiet, then it's obvious that you've heard and you've stopped. But if you keep on making trumpet noises, then it's like, uh, oh, they've they've not. So yeah, do you like double down, and you know, 
perhaps yeah. invite further wrath and noise and disturbance. So they're like, oh, there is someone in there, obviously. So I'm just going to keep on making more and more noise on the doorbell and banging on the windows until they come out and <laughs> tell me to get lost or throw some Snickers at me or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. Trumpet noises, trombone noises, you can go with that nice. Mm-hmm. I also um, made my younger people's day by teaching him the first two lines of spooky scary skeletons and thereby ruining his mum's day because she's going to have to hear that for the next four months probably enjoy these three notes yeah there's more than three notes but yeah he's he's just going to keep playing that i think good so uh i i have done my bit in the name of Halloween, I guess. <laughs> oh dear. But yes. But yeah, I hope I hope everybody's been enjoying all of the uh short ghost stories. Yeah. Um, even though we haven't had Dracula, but we will. We, we will. will. It's then. yeah. I, Sam can <clears throat> say if like more than one sentence without coughing. Yeah, it's like it it it's it's kind of a a manifold thing. I was gonna say twofold, but it's like, no, there's more than that. Um, yeah, firstly, the... It's like origami. Exactly. Um, exactly, yeah. Or like the part of a car. Um, like, cars have manifolds. I... Oh. Um, yeah, first, like, yes. I'm struggling to... If I were to, like, try and sit and read, I'm going to need to keep, like, coughing and clearing my throat, and that's just not going to make a pleasant listening experience. But also... Th- Weeks ago now, when I like read ahead the next section, there is there is a lot of quite accented uh, speech. There's one character who is like described as being American, and the way he talks, um, or the way his speech is written, is kind of accented American. Um, it's not just like something you. And it's not something I feel like I could just kind of read in my usual normal English accent. Um, and it would like I feel like I'm going to need to perhaps lean into the American accent a little bit, which isn't something I can do comfortably. Um, and then there's another character who is from Whitby, and is again written with sort of oh, quite north. quite a northern accent. Um, yep. uh, yeah, he's from Yorkshire, and. He. They don't say Yorkshire. Yorkshire, really? I, yeah. I don't know. It's not. No, it's not Yorkshire. No. Yorkshire. York, I think. Yeah. Well, there we go. Exactly. Um, and it felt like felt like the sort of thing that I'm probably going to need to actually like take a few, take a few cracks at um some of these things anyway. So what I will probably have to end up doing is just like pre-recording it so I can. I know we don't on like the live streams. You don't strive for perfection, but this feels like I'm going to be reading and rereading things a lot. And so, mm. yeah, I think I might actually pre-record that one just because it's it's going to be a real challenge. Um, yeah. So it's it's kind of those factors. Um, basically, like a little bit intimidated by what's coming up, and I'm like, no, <laughs> maybe I should put Stoker it off. Stoker, why? Yeah. But um, yeah, I I do feel tremendously guilty for being like, ah, finally in Halloween month in October in the spooky season, we should read Dracula. Here is the first part of Dracula. Goodbye. <laughs> Bat. Yeah. And out I go. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. The anticipation well, will make it all the sweeter. I hope yeah, so. We'll just, yeah. I mean, it's not like we exclusively read spooky ghost stories just in October. Um, we kind of pretty much do them all year. Oh, oh, it's summery and warm and lo- long evenings and stuff. That's that spooky ghost season, right? Oh, it's springtime and like, yeah, that's and there's ghost stories that, that like they're 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 season that well not seasonal they're they're all seasons. They are yeah. evergreen. That's the one. Yes, um, but also it's um like the the old tradition of ghost stories you would sort of tell from this time of the year until until Christmas basically. Oh yeah. Um, so it's uh, yeah it's yeah. ghost ghost story ste- ghost so- oh god ghost story season there we go from sort of I would say September onwards really yeah maybe late September early October onwards yeah I mean well um, the, the and winter's pretty spooky so maybe a good till like March yeah 
the like the the MR James that MR James collection that I've got literally talks about him like from him like sort of saying like oh you know writing these stories specifically to be read out um and kind of effectively like performed to guests at christmas gatherings like that's yes that's what they did um yep. it's like oh i've got a whole new collection of bangers for you let's sit around the fire and have a have a listen to some ghost stories um yeah so yeah and sit around the christmas tree and tell ghost stories as well yeah indeed that's the that's the dickens is a dickens thing we read last year at christmas that was about Everyone sitting around the Christmas tree and sharing ghost stories. And Probably, things, I think. So, I, thing. yeah. The, and the only one I really, I mean, I remember there was a bit from Wind in the Willows that you read, and yes. there was also the 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 very sad Christmas tree one that Sylvia uh, just Hans, did, the Hans, the Hans Christian, Christian Anderson, Anderson one. Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, the, Hans Christian Anderson usually should come with just a disclaimer of that you will be sad. This will make yeah. you sad. Yeah. Turn of the Screw, yes. Explicitly written with a framing device and the narrator telling it to people at Christmas, yes. Turn of the Screw is one I definitely want me or Sam to read at some point. Mm -hmm. because Does sound like sounds like a, a classic. It is a classic. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to give away anything. No, no. No spoilers. No. Um, um, but it's, yeah, it's it's a very famous ghost story. Yeah. By Henry James, I believe. Not M.R. James, but mm -hmm. Henry James. Hello, Lady Mephistopheles. Hello. I Welcome. hope you are well. Um, how how are we? Uh, Dishevelled. Um, yeah. Yeah, various, various states of disrepair and disarray, I would say. But, you know, here. Um, and, and, and all right. And I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah. I guess yeah. On the on the topic of, on the topic of like spooky things and ghost stories and stuff, I was uh, just telling Lucy yesterday. I I made a start on watching Guillermo del Toro's uh, Cabinet of Curiosities, um, which That's I. That's not right. He is not Italian. No, he's not. He's right. Spanish. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Good job. Um, yeah. yeah, I I I start. I watched the first episode yesterday. It's on Netflix, new series. I've and I've heard very good things about it from yeah. the number of horror connoisseurs which I follow. And yeah, it, I mean, it was good enough that I watched the first episode. It's like, oh, th this absolutely slaps. This is great. I'm not going to watch the rest so that I can watch it with Lucy when she's here. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you said you were watching it, and I was just like, oh, Del Toro. I love Del Toro. Yeah. I was like, oh, I want, I want to watch it. Yeah. So yeah, the the first one really, really good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I yeah, I love that it's, I love that it's just a, a basically it's it's a series of short stories. Um, I don't know how many episodes there are, but yeah, each one is different. Um, they're not like interconnected or anything other than Mr. Del Toro has his cabinet of curiosities and he opens it up and takes out another one and goes here. It's a story this week, for about about this. Um. But yeah, I I watched watched the first one. We'll be watching the rest in time, and very good. Off the back of that, I can recommend. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Are there any other spooky things we've been watching recently? <sighs> I, I mean, there was Severance. I would I would class Severance as kind of spooky. I it yeah it's kind of well it's sort of thriller thriller yeah yeah it's a modern yeah like mystery thriller thing. Um. Yeah. What we do in the shadows doesn't count. It. I mean, it's vampires. That and Wellington <laughs> yeah. Paranormal. It's you know. Oh yeah, that's that was amusing. <laughs> Comedy can be horrifying. I don't know. Nah. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't call what we do in the shadows horrifying. <laughs> Unless you call like some of the attempts at singing from the characters. Horrifying, because they are. This, hang on. Singing. What? Yeah, when Nadja keeps on trying to sing. I... Well, not trying to sing, but she just sings oh, okay. occasionally. It's oh, just I, sort I, of this I, wailing. I, maybe it doesn't even register as singing to me. I don't know. I don't, wow. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, you watched Netflix Sabrina not too long ago. Glad they ended it. I've not seen Oh, yeah. yeah I've, not, I've not seen that. I heard. I haven't really heard many good things about it. Yeah. 
I've heard most people just say it was a bit rubbish, yeah. but I don't know. Oh yeah, Henry Cavill's left but... The Witcher. You know, Witcher, that's monsters yeah. and stuff. That's that's Halloween appropriate, right? But we're we're very much clutching at straws. Clutching oh yeah, at straws, clutching at threads. Uh, grasping at straws is a. Uh... I've heard. Grasping at threads, clutching at straw. Which one's... Yeah. Oh, God. I've mixed my metaphors. Uh, but yeah, he has. Yeah. And no one's entirely sure why. But... I... Yeah, yeah, I've... I've, I've, I've... I mean, yeah. Again, it's our show. We can take the topic wherever we like. Um, I I was reading some more speculation yesterday that basically he was seemingly just at odds with the showrunners the whole time. That uh, they they were kind of very much yeah we read the books and didn't like it so we thought we'd just kind of make the character something completely different and he was oh. and he was just there the whole time being like no no please can we give Geralt a little bit more character and personality like he's a he's kind of an amateur philosopher in the books he's quite smart he does more than just grunt and swear yeah like he he's he could be a more please give me some please give me some acting please give me some oh. and yeah yeah and so it sounds like that. I guess in conjunction with um old James Gunn taking over DC and like a new a new role for Superman um I guess between those two things it's like well then I guess I'm just going to go where I'm wanted rather than stick with this dream project of mine that I've been fighting so hard to make work and the showrunners just don't want to listen to so yeah, yeah. you know go where you loved really I guess and yeah it's a shame yeah. Oh well. Hmm. Not sure who said it's good, but it was fun. Okay. Well, fun, fun has its place. Fun, fun yeah. is good. We like fun. Mm-hmm. But... We have fun sometimes. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Um. um yeah. I. I was trying to think that because there was a ghost story I read last week that stuck in my head for ages, and now, of course, I've forgotten it. Was it? Uh, oh, it was the inexperienced ghost. Turns oh, out, yes. yeah. Turns out, H.G. Wells can actually write pretty good comedy. Yeah. Didn't didn't <clears throat> realize that, but it seems that. I mean, I think most most authors, to a certain degree, I mean, they all they all have a sense of humor, obviously. But um, well, I think that's... we just we discussed did we discuss this last time or discuss it at some point? The whole kind of um, thinking that old authors must be all stuffy and stuff, and it's like, well, yeah. people can't have sense of humor. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that was that was my comment in chat. That it's like, oh, I, yeah. it, it it made me realize how often I I picture these guys because again, you see the pictures and they're all very similar. It's just like just an old, stern-looking white guy with a mustache, and you know, yeah. like late 50s late 60s that kind of thing like shirt tie jacket doesn't look like someone who's going to crack a joke or laugh at one like they they look yeah. prepared for business and to take everything seriously and obviously that they're, they're writing like like again i suppose like the first point for their against that is like yeah but they're writing like spooky stories and that again that, that feels like or in in the case of she was like science fiction and they they don't this they don't feel like the domain of people who take themselves that rigidly seriously. It should be like, no, we're just yeah. going to do like a business drama about a man who runs a business and earns lots of money. And then he does things with the money and this will be a fun, well, not not a fun story. It won't be frivolous. It'll be an important allegory and a lesson for everyone about why you should go to church and, and that kind of thing. And, yes. and so, yeah, that like the fact that they're not doing that, um, should be like the first clue that oh yeah these you, my impression of these people is probably a little bit wrong. Um, yeah. But yeah, it still caught me by surprise to be like really? H.G. Wells wrote a comedy yeah. about a crap ghost. What? Yeah. Like yeah. I need I need more stories about crap ghosts in my life. Like Canterville Ghost. I was so glad to find that because it's like Canterville Ghost is just such a good ghost story because mm. the ghost is. Well, because it's all sort of from the ghost point of view and you feel really sorry for the ghost. And he's trying so hard. Um, but it's sort of like, well, ghosts don't really have much of a place in what was then the modern world, at least. Yeah. Because everybody's like, oh, ghosts don't exist. And then what about the poor ghosts? Um, and yeah, so to find to find a story that was kind of sort of on the long, along the same lines 
Um, yeah. But actually kind of genuinely a bit, oh dear, at the end. Yeah. Um, it, it was it was nice. Hmm. Uh, yeah, nice to find that and nice to find it done with with a wry sense of humour, but at the same time, there is that slight horror slash spooky undertone that is genuinely worrying and scary for the mm. characters involved yeah yeah genre fiction has been the refuge of delightful weirdos since forever yeah true and and i yeah that's the thing i guess it's like see seeing those people like allowing themselves to be to be a delightful weirdo like yeah seeing <laughs> like yeah hg wells um and and some of the others be like yeah you know i'm i'm gonna write something weird um yeah and again i guess if if you're already doing sci-fi then it's, it's like well you know it's not a massive leap yeah exactly it's like it's yeah di- different topic but same weird um yeah and again thinking it's still a still a shame the the struggles that you get even in modern fiction for genre fiction to be taken as seriously as like just hard dramas about yep. the the plight of people like there's there's some yeah. there's there's some really good like delicate thoughtful insightful stuff in in the various genres which are so easily dismissed um yep. that yeah it's it's a real And shame. again I I I know I bring this up every time this conversation happens but the whole thing with um Pratchett who got interviewed about about his his writing and everything mm. and um i think the interviewer asked something along the lines of um do you ever think you you'd want to write something more serious <laughs> like as in more serious like yeah. proper writing literary yeah. writing kind yeah, of yeah. thing and i think and he just basically turned to them and was just like well what's the first stories that humans told each other i guarantee they weren't based in reality yeah it's like they were fantasy stories they were telling stories about things that we couldn't explain or they were telling stories about imagine like things from your imagination yeah like, yeah so why is that and sci-fi why are some, yeah oh, uh, well the one thing i really don't like is the fact that they're always lumped together yeah because no um yeah and and the fact that they're yeah they're both just derided and thought of as these kind of they're, they're lesser fiction yeah it's because you're using like, your yeah you're talking about things that aren't real yeah okay um don't major in creative writing if you like things that aren't capital l literature ah fun mm. um well the thing is as well is that i i would love it if there was a bit more understanding that not only can sci-fi and fantasy tell good important stories that obviously reflect like our world the world in which we are living and our universe again Pratchett being a fantastic example like the, yeah. the the amount of kind of very very obvious thinly veiled yeah um mirrors that he sets up to our own world and about societal injustices and all of that yeah. i mean it's it's very obvious and he makes excellent points and it makes you think but but this kind of this kind of idea that that these things can't be literary you can't have a sort of very finely crafted um very deliberately written like each word chosen with care like there's symbolism there there's yeah foreshadowing in a kind of very subtle way it's like you can't have that because you're in a silly world that is silly it's like <clears throat> no of course you can have that like yeah. li- li- like sci-fi it's using, using the same words it's using the same grammar and structure yeah. and linguistic rules yeah 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 like and that's um, the thing like it and it's you, sorry carry on well no it's good yeah like you get like you 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 get like obviously there's the fantastical sci-fi and fantasy where it's just like oh yeah it's, uh, this man is going to get in a spaceship and fly thousands of light years across space and find aliens and shoot them biff bam kapow and stuff and it's like yeah that's that's not very highbrow fiction but that's not 
science fiction. That's just a particular someone using science fiction to tell that story. And you get those stories in grounded modern day stuff as well about just yeah. John, the really cool man who goes and like <laughs> runs a cool business and gets all the hot ladies and stuff like that. And we call it James <laughs> yeah. Bond. And like, yeah. you, you get... I don't think James Bond is thought of as literature somehow. I... <laughs> not oh, capital L literature. I mean, you, you should see the opinions that come out when they try and make James Bond not a straight white guy. Um, it's treated well, as the... the, the oh, how dare you mess with the classics? Um, defiling oh, the original work. Yeah. And like... But that's that's the point. Like, you get... Like, yeah, James Bond isn't thought of as that, but it's 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 set in the real world. It's not I'm sure he's got yeah. like gadgets and stuff, but it's it's still set in the real it's not science fiction, it's not fantasy. It's it is much more within the scope of what is considered like literary and proper and book a prize winning. And so like I don't really know where I'm going with this point. Um <laughs> yeah like sci what i mean what sci-fi and fantasy give you is a new perspective to or the possibility of a new perspective to reframe the real world like a new angle yeah. upon which you can use to look at real world problems it's what as you say pratchett did um yeah. it's what yeah a number of sci-fi authors um do and will continue to do so yeah to <sighs> Well, it's like um, uh, Quantum or QNTM. The, oh, yeah. Yeah. Who, uh, Quantum, yeah. Um, stay with your mouth closed. Exactly. No, no vowels. Um, yeah. yeah, the author Just who Welsh. wrote that... Um, oh, there is no anti anti-memetics division. Well, he, he wrote that. No, I'm trying to think and... of what the, the first thing that I read. The, uh, that, like the yes, Wikipedia... Like the, basically, like a, a Wikipedia-like entry from the distant future about um the first human consciousness uploaded into into computers and and running on running on computer hardware um i i keep wanting to call her like m acevedo um like a-c-e-v-e-d-o because that's the name of the character whose consciousness is uploaded but it has a different name that is a woman's name and i always forget what it is um probably because i'm massively sexist but um yeah. Yes, he he wrote this piece. I think he goes by he him, even though for a while, like that identity, I kind of yeah, like just went by quantum, and that could be anybody. But I think I've seen he him used in interviews and stuff. Um, right. <clears throat> wrote this piece. It's like a yeah, it's like a Wikipedia entry um, about um, yeah, it's just very wikipedia like um just like straightforward detailed um kind of emotionless description like of account like right yeah emotionless like account of the events following a a human consciousness consciousness being uploaded into computers um and being able to be like copied and distributed and and what happens in like the timeline following that um and obviously the reaction to that is going to be, oh, yeah, so, like, playing the game Soma or something like that, like, oh, yeah, actually, it's kind of messed mm. up what you can do or what you would be able to do if you were to upload human consciousnesses into... But effectively, turn turn the human mind into software that you could then run on computers and copy and redistribute and spool up when you need it to do some work and you force it to do work and then you shut it down again and how, how cruel and inhumane this would be. And Quantum, the author, has like come out afterwards and gone, no, I'm not talking about that. That's, that's the, the hyperbolic example that I'm giving you to talk about mm. how we actually treat people now, today, yeah. in the present world, at Amazon at software companies, at all manner of businesses and tech companies all around the world who already yep. treat people like this as inhuman slaves, as just things that you can turn on and off and lives that you can control. I'm not talking about then, I'm talking about now and today. But it's sci-fi, so it's not real fiction. It doesn't mm -hmm. actually address real issues of real people. It talks about human yeah. minds being loaded into a computer. It's like, oh, no, please... Get the point. Yeah. Um, welcome back, the hat. I've been ranting. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. 
Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of the things I, I really would love to see um, in kind of school syllabuses in like the um, like in GCSE or A level or whatever, mm. um, or around the world, other other types of like curriculum. I'd love to see fantasy and sci-fi in the books that you study in any kind of literature studies. It's like you study things like I remember studying. Um, oh God, what did I study? I did actually have some on my English lit. Uh, recommended oh, did you? Read- yeah, um, because it was the only ones I looked at. I had. I can't remember what other ones were there because I'm I'm a terrible student. I always have been and always going to be. Um, had Brave New World and Day of the Triffids on there, which again aren't Day of the Triffids. Yeah, huh? that was the only so one. So Brave I... New World, Brave New World, and 1984. Although yeah. 1984, I guess isn't Those, really. Sci-fi. They're the only ones you're allowed to read. They're, Those yeah, exactly. they they have they have crossed the barrier to oh no okay like but these 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 are real fiction these are these are real yeah. literature. Yeah. Everything else can go. Um, yeah. Yeah. And again, I think that's because their authors wrote other things yes. that weren't sort of sci fi adjacent. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, Brave New World, everyone should read Brave New World, especially just the way the world's going, because, um, good lord. Yeah. It's kind of scarily close. Um, Animal Farm could also be considered fantasy, I guess, but it's so obviously metaphor oracle for our society yeah. that it's it's not like he's creating a whole a whole new world um yeah it's not like he's doing world building and stuff i mean yes it's fantastical in that the animals are uh, have are sentient and sort of have a society but but yeah i mean yeah i don't know it also feels like strangely as the years have gone on and as we've developed as society, the prejudice against sci-fi, fantasy, probably ghost stories as well, has got worse. Because as we found out reading ghost stories, every author had a crack at them. Yeah. And that was fine. And everybody was like, oh, cool. Yeah, have a go at this. So that's great. Whereas now I, I I would say if you if you write like a ghost story, I mean, maybe not ghost stories so much, but they're definitely on the kind of, I guess, lighter side. If the literature snobs think of, yeah, think of their stuff as heavy, yeah. heavy literature. Um, it's definitely on the lighter side. And it seems that, yeah, now you write that or you write something slightly fantastical or whatever, and it's considered lesser um whereas i mean war of the worlds when that was first published it like war of the worlds was a seminal work it's it's a Mm. big thing and people i feel like people take it again a little bit more seriously yeah than a lot of fantasy or sci-fi that's been written in recent years yeah which um yeah Horror is definitely general fiction for these purposes. Yeah. yeah, but but I mean I mean to write a good horror story, a good ghost story, or a good ho- horror story. I mean I say ghost story in a sort of different bracket because they're not all horrifying. They're just, yeah, some of them are just atmospheric and spooky. Mm. But to write a sort of a horror, no matter how horrifying, that takes real skill. Yeah, real skill. Um, and I mean same same goes for horror films as well. There are so many that fall flat because the person, behind, like the director, doesn't know, um, doesn't know how to tell it really well and get that kind of sense of atmosphere and actually get the audience to to feel horror well, um, or there's, terror. There's different kinds. Of and to put that in a book is harder. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing you you get with with horror films and horror games. You've got like the different brackets as well. You've got the just like the bah, boogity boo jump scare Halloween jump scare, thing yeah. of like, oh, it's a horror movie. Why? Because there's a man with a knife. Ah, oh, made me jump. That kind of thing. Um, yeah. And then you have you have the the other end, which is yeah, like again the the, the classic quote of like um, terror, like terror is that that makes you look away. Horror is that which um, you can't look away from. I always from. Yeah. again always forget the name of the 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 author that. Um, coined that, and I'm I'm paraphrasing. That's not like exactly how she 
how she worded it. Um, yeah. But uh, and I apologise because I've. I'm told every time, then it's months in between, and I, I forget <laughs> her name. Um, but yeah, like that's and you like, and that that is not to be dismissive because you can you still get very good jump scare films and games, and you get very oh, bad yeah. jumps. And it's not to say like one is highbrow, one is lowbrow. Like the, ev- everything, everything can be good or bad depending on where you sit on that spectrum, um, like wherever yeah. you sit on the spectrum, I should say. And so. <sighs> Yeah, like you, you get, you get good, like horror films which are about horrifying subjects and aren't full of jump scares, um, but actually are are dealing with a a horrifying subject um, from from yeah. any different like again it could be any subject that they've picked and chosen to make horrifying. Um, yep. and then, then you get bad ones which are just, ah, man went mad and killed people yeah. because forgot to take pills and yeah. you get that a lot in, in video games as well and yeah, it's yeah, and what often happens is people go with an expectation of, oh, it's a horror game or it's a horror film sick, it's going to make me jump but I'm going to have a good hour and a half to eight hours depending on the medium and and whatever and, and it didn't make me jump no, so therefore it was bad like, no that's it's it's not like that yeah it's, it's, yeah um yeah. general decline tolerance for stories that don't spoon feed you spoon feed you a literal point layering your point about society yeah i i do worry that we are becoming a lot more well i don't want to say dense as a society i just want i just i guess we we're just expecting to be spoon fed the point we don't I, want to be we don't want to do the thinking I feel I like media literacy way... isn't in a good place. Is no is how I would put that. Like, yeah, there is. I mean, I yeah, that that I can, <laughs> I can see like just almost fractaline series, just branching paths, just like spreading out and like, you know, like like a, a bit of glass. Or like a sheet of glass that's just been broken and just like the splintering cracks, not really fractalized. Um, except yeah. that the more you zoom in, the more cracks you see and it just goes in forever. Um, just in terms of fact, like contributing factors to, to where society is right now. Boy, we're getting on some big topics. Mm. Um, oh, we are. And this is why you're here. Yay. We found, you we like found us something talking to talk about. about. Big topics. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you, you have like in terms of social media in terms of society and what is what is profitable what sells at the moment it is it's clickbait thumbnails and headlines it is you're gonna hate this thing this thing smells really bad here go and like that's that's what sells that what that's what gets reactions and so that and that's what get clicks on your video on your tweets on on whatever like you you tell someone they're gonna hate this thing and then you say hey look at it and they do and yeah. so the, yeah like the entire industry kind of around that and chasing that and so i feel like rather rather than nuance and discussion we don't have platforms anymore that really foster nuance and discussion um you know twitter is no. uh 280 characters and sure you can make a thread or you can do a twit longer but very few people are going to actually click through and read all of that and it's it's just not the medium for that and so it is mm. all about like finding finding the, the ch- smallest cheapest most easily digestible point and bang like put that out there make that your headline yeah. and get it in front of people and negativity sells you tell people something's bad mm-hmm. they're going to do it and so yep. yeah I, I i feel like that is going to be a significant contributing factor to to the general decline of media literacy like i didn't like this thing why cuz it was bad Mm, okay well i guess that's your answer but we could go in and discuss and dissect this is it you didn't like it because it was bad you didn't like it because you had a set of expectations and it didn't meet those expectations did it actually do what it set out to do well or did it do it badly who knows we're not going to discuss this we're just going to move on to the next video and yeah yeah i i I feel like if if i had to if i had to point at one thing 
his my top one reason why people are no no longer good at discussing <laughs> the things I don't like. Uh, it's this, uh, and here's five that you didn't discover. It's yeah. yeah, and and that's not to say I'm good at it. I I still I'll like watch something that everyone said. Oh, this is great, and I'll watch it, and I'll get to the end and go, is it? And it it does still take an effort to actually like stop myself and be like, okay, I don't think I liked that, but it made me feel something. What's it made me feel? And to actually go away and digest that rather than just kind of vomit it back up and be like, nope, didn't like it, move on. Um, yeah. But to actually like, yeah, what what was I expecting this to do? Did okay, clearly this didn't do what I expected, and it therefore left me feeling unsatisfied how can we adjust this was it that the thing didn't did it did it do its thing badly did it do it well and i just missed the point um what can i do in future to better like discern the point and like pick it up as i'm going beforehand or adjust my expectations like how can i better meet media at the point at which it sets out um rather than just going with my own set of expectations and dismiss things because it didn't land well i thought it would mm. and like that's a whole thing um yep and yeah getting into metaphors and oh man there's been some there's been some good examples recently and i can't think of a single one of them um of just of people online yeah people online spectacularly missing the point of a piece of media and not i guess not knowing whether they have whether they have just missed the point of it or whether like that's just the angle that sells better because again if it's like mm. angry about popular film that everyone likes i mean you've had game of thrones house of the dragon um and lord of the rings of power going on recently which have you know nice yeah you you get a lot of like ah this tv series sucks headlines at the end of that because everyone's talking about it and it's gonna get clicks on it um and again i've not i've not read the game of thrones books so i don't have like that informed opinion of them um but i've seen like seem like they they get a lot of criticism for the content of them and like they yeah like they they seem like you have a lot of stuff that frankly makes people uncomfortable and upsetting like the the way that women are treated in those books and when the books and mm. in the tv show for instance um and they get they get criticism and i'm not kind of giving an opinion i guess one way or another on whether the criticism of those scenes is justified or not but seemingly they are meant to be books and stories that as one of the themes is about how like the the fantasy tales that we tell and the heroes that we put on pedestals which you know are quite often men the the men that we put in power and you know seek to like hero worship how actually they kind of suck they're not good um and it's sort of difficult to address those topics without covering the subjects of what those guys tend to do when left in power and so i that's not to say that martin and the show handlers have handled those things well um but yeah like it's it i mean broad strokes it's a difficult subject and yeah. i <sighs> I, I yeah I I don't think I would have the the skill or deafness to actually handle them um, in writing those in sort of writing that kind of material it's it's extremely toxic um, mm. and you risk getting it all over yourself if you do but I think yeah it's there there needs to be some level of like recognition of what the author is actually trying to do rather than yeah rather than just like here's what I wanted you to do and you didn't do that so therefore it's bad it's yeah yeah I I don't know I've I've gone off on tangents and I'm gonna no, it's, so so. Okay. it's yeah like Andy's saying as well the been writing reviews and actually thinking about why you did or didn't like something is yeah is really good yeah um because it because then as well like it 
it helps you cultivate a sort of a pool of things that you know you like and the reasons you like them and you're like oh okay cool so i can go and seek out things that are similar to this or along the same sort of lines or with the same kind of vibe yeah. or whatever um but but also i think that also gives you a gives you a kind of protective bubble um that because you have engaged with these things and because you have spent the time going i do like this because xyz i don't like this because this that and the other yeah it means that when you then find more of the things that you don't like you have already got that kind of base reasoning behind the the fact that you don't like it that you yeah. can draw on and you don't then get sort of sucked into the the tide of people just going no it's bad yeah and giving no other no other kind of um feedback or thought yeah and i'd say actually what what you were just saying there is like the literally the most important first step that you can make in in kind of cultivating your your media literacy it is to say mm. i didn't like it not it's bad because a yeah. lot of people conflate it like it's really and I, I hate a lot of people a lot of people are saying most people agree mm. um but the the kind of the, the i think the easy first mistake that that everyone does frankly is to say is to conflate i didn't like it and it's bad um you know, like um, Nope, Jordan Peele film. Um, that oh, seemed okay. to get a lot of people going, I didn't like it, therefore it's bad. Um, and so just coming out with, this film sucks. And it's like actually distancing those two things, putting some difference between like, okay, I didn't like it. Why didn't I like it? What was my problem? What what were my problems with this? And, and then sort of being like, okay, does that make it a bad film? Or does that just make? Does that just mean it didn't work for me? Is it just not what I was looking for? Um, and that's that's a a good first step to actually take. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I feel like. I feel like I've come from quite a. a sort of an interesting. Base, point, mm. with regards to that because when you're when you're a classical musician when you go through the kind of training and well not indoctrination but when you go through the kind of sheer volume of learning stuff that you have mm. to do um you get the this is a great composer this was a great composer objectively this was a great composer you can listen to the music and you go yes this has that there's a very very high level of craftsmanship that's gone into this this is good because it is objectively highly skilled and sounds well not necessarily sounds nice but sounds the way that the composer wanted it to sound hmm. but you can say that and you can have that and you can just go mm, nah not my thing yeah. um and there is <clears throat> there is very much i think there is more of a more of an acceptance that people like certain composers, people don't like others. Like I don't like Wagner very much, um, but there are people who absolutely swear by him. Um, there are people who hate Mozart. I love Mozart. Um, but again, you you come to these realizations because you listen and you go, ha, huh. oh, cool, that's interesting. That's what I like about this composer. And then you listen to another piece of music by a different composer. And you're like, oh, okay, there's some similarities here. Yeah. Um, so you you've already kind of, and and quite frankly, the length of the things that you have to listen to or you choose to listen to a lot longer than like, I don't know, reading a short review or watching a, well, some of them longer than watching a film. Hmm. Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, like the sheer volume of stuff you have to go through is a lot. So you get you get used to not dismiss well a not dismissing things right away but also that what you think is not bad but what you think is not really your thing can be someone else's thing yeah. and that doesn't mean you have to say to them no you're wrong what you like is bad yeah you you have to get into 
a conversation because they have got loads of things that they can say are good about it and they can they can literally show you like they can have a score in front of them and go this 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 see what he's done here see yeah. what they've done this and <clears throat> there is a lot more kind of in-depth discussion and understanding that what someone likes may not be someone else someone else's cup of tea but objectively you can say that this thing is good yeah it's like i mean f- films objectively there's a hell of a lot of work that goes into most of them and yeah. they're highly skilled pieces of art yeah same with books it's like yeah again i, I feel like we have this we, we've had this discussion a lot on here and that's fine um it's like yeah we've had some some iteration of it yeah um like ultimately we yeah we by by giving films by giving reviews scores at the end you know out, how many stars out of five one out of ten one out of a hundred and is it in that or it's it's given us this concept of like good or bad like is this a good film is this a bad film is this book good is it bad and really like that that that's that's just a really bad way to frame it like reviews and criticism and discussion should like the primary goal should be to help people find more of what they like and you do that by picking apart and understanding what you do like and then finding those elements in other things like that's that should be the whole cycle that's yeah and as i've as i've gotten older and wiser um and yeah. I, you know, just tired with like negative criticism and stuff. Um, yeah. Like, I I feel like I've I've come more towards that of like, and like Lucy's seen me do it a lot with music. If like I'll I'll be listening to something and go, oh, I really like, I like this track by this artist. I don't really like the rest of their stuff, but this one, yeah. this one I really like. Like yeah. the other things on the album, you know, here or there, take or leave might go on me over time but this one has some stuff in it that i really like okay why is the album bad no the album's fine but this this track has the stuff that i like and it's not the only good one on the album the others the other stuff's good but what is it that i like about this oh it's it's these sounds it's this sort of composition it's it's this this pattern um whatever I, i like this in particular okay so now i've got a better idea of what i like here i can go looking for that elsewhere i can find other other artists that are doing those kinds of things you may like find some other comments up like oh i like this track by this person here and there's a couple others on the album as well that sound like that as well and it does this hit kind of tickles the same parts of the brain as this one here okay well let's pull that together what do i like about and you it's it's discovery it's it's yeah, yeah it's it's helping and you get that with stories you get that with films and games and things and all all the media you consume it's like oh i like i like these things i like ghost stories that deal with these subjects okay well then we're going to go looking for more ghost stories that deal with these subjects what about these subjects do you think it is that resonates with you oh it's this factor okay well then we've got something else to latch on do we can go and look for that in other things as well so it's not Mm. just about a a ghost haunting a spooky house in the 18th century but it's specifically this type of ghost doing these things that creates this feeling in you oh okay well maybe we'll try these recommendations these other things follow those same ideas you might yeah. like it, you might not. Oh, great. I read this one, I read this one. I liked this one. Wasn't so hot on this one. What's the difference? You start reading and discovering and learning and becoming more literate in the media that you, that you enjoy. And it's not... And you're not going, this one's good, this one's bad. You're going, this one has the factors that I like. And... Yeah. Yeah, and that's why finding finding reviewers of things whose opinions yours your own align with um yeah. is extremely useful because then that gives you a bit of a shortcut you don't have to agree with everything yeah. but you can be like oh okay i know that if they liked this there's a good chance i'll like this and they'll probably mention those same factors in the review and you read through and go oh yeah good it does this it does this great um yeah, yeah that's that's how it works well that's how it should work not yeah but yeah not good bad was... five out of ten yeah kind of stuff but yeah. also what i what i I like you talking about ghost stories and seeking out ones that you particularly like in terms of um, the themes and stuff. Hmm. But I, I, I just really like having a book like this Hmm. and just opening it and going, cool. 
Yeah. Uh, that's a cool title. Let's go and read that. Yeah. And just having that that freedom of this is a big book of ghost stories. Um, obviously, you don't want to read anything that's like awful and offensive and just bad in yeah. but morally bad let's go with that yeah. um you don't yeah you don't want that but you can sniff those out fairly quickly um but but it's just really nice when you've got a big collection of stories that are brought together by just the one thing but that they can be all sorts of different types of that yeah. one thing and you don't have to and it, it's it's like your work's kind of done for you a little bit because then you don't have to seek out things that deal with these themes yeah. and because then you're just reading the same type of because this is this is the other problem this is kind of the flip side of the coin is you end up then just consuming the same kind of media literature yeah. whatever um and so when you're story sort of, buffet yeah basically i was i was literally just about to use that as a <laughs> as an analogy so you're just being you're just given a big old buffet table of stuff yeah. And you can go along and go, oh, that looks cool. Like, not told what anything is. Yeah. Right. We're, we're, we're imagining allergies aren't a thing. Yeah. Um, and COVID. <laughs> not as well. told. Never yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like not not knowing what anything is, imagining that you'll be fine with everything. Mm. Um, and just go, oh, that looks interesting. I'll have, I'll try that. And then you find, oh, okay. Yeah. I did enjoy that. That's, that's interesting. What about, yeah. what about this other thing that's got a slightly different. <clears throat> if we're going back to books it's a slightly different yeah. title or it's written by a, yeah. a person who's had a very different background or something like that you just go huh okay let's hear hear your take on on something yeah and then and then you have this because because yeah like going back to ghost stories again ghost yeah serendipity of browsing exactly mm. but ghost stories are like pretty as kind of i don't know as um topics go they're pretty limited ghost stories in general involve well something supernatural or something dead yeah you don't you don't have too much there's got to be something some dead kind or something, of something that's going to be dead pretty soon yes yeah some kind of foreboding they're not usually particularly positive sometimes they are sometimes yeah. they can be uplifting but you're kind of you're always dealing with a very narrow field of themes and actual events yeah um like a for example the empty house the one i read by blackwood a couple of weeks ago i think now um it was just you're they, they were in an empty house and there were ghosts that's not an original concept not mm -hmm. at all but again like the within those very narrow bounds and this is and this is i i think we we've said this before probably several times the whole kind of thing of if you're limiting yourself you actually find new and interesting things to do within those limitations sometimes it's way way better to to have those have those limitations like i don't <clears throat> i don't write about anything apart from this this is the topic that i'm writing about um do you then... know about the um the, the french literary movement Ulipo, which was basically that kind of idea um, yeah. I think it's uh, is it ouvrage de littérature potentielle or something is what it stands for. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, je suis désolé, je ne peux pas parler en français, tout bien. Um, but the the thank you. The whole point being, like, and it, I guess it, it was I, this was GCSE English lit. Not G, no, sorry, um, A level English lit. I think we discussed this um, where. Yeah, it's kind of basically it's like putting as within the scope of what they were doing, putting like heavy restrictions on yourself, but like confining yourself, putting the training weights on, to to make yourself like work harder, and mm. to to think more about what you were doing. So it would be like I am going to write an entire novel, and I'm not going to use the word and that kind yeah. of thing like putting really putting like hard restrictions on yourself to to see what it, what you could do within those confines yeah. and that's yeah that was kind of their whole whole vibe um i just wanted to interrupt and drop that bit of knowledge yeah no i mean um, that's that's a it's a it's a kind of common artistic thing to do i mean you had like again in music you had all sorts of things you had serialism which was 
every note in the 12, like you make a 12 tone row of 12 notes, every single note is equal. Mm -hmm. um, you've got aleatoric music, which is just, I roll the <clears throat> dice and I put the note down that I end up with. Yeah. Or I, yeah, it's it, music by chance, basically. Um, which obviously is kind of... Sorry, I've just cramped my leg up. One second. Oh, no. It's kind of the opposite, really, I guess. You're you're making your... It's like chance is quite a large scope of things that can happen. Um, but but still, that kind of, yeah, limiting yourself. Okay, I think I'm okay. You okay? Okay. Yeah, it just hurt. it's like you just feel the muscle just go... Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to assume a different um, seating position. That's probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's like that's that's why that's why it's always fun to fun to have a month like Spooktober where we are solely yeah. limiting ourselves to spooky stories. Yeah, because then you end up finding out finding all sorts of interesting takes on a yeah. very narrow genre. Yeah, um, and we'll say like with what you're saying about having like this this buffet like selection and and like that's that's what i used to do with sci-fi um mm. i want to get to andy's point in a bit in chat but i just want to bring this <laughs> up while i while i was thinking of it um because yeah i've said before like my my introduction to most reading not like not just sci-fi but most reading was through sci-fi was through the books that my older brother would collect um mm. and he he would go to like oxfam charity shop in the uk um and just pick up like used sci-fi books from there sometimes like an entire novel like clark asimov larry nevin ones like that other times he would get like um collections of short stories and so like when when he moved out and went off to university um and i was kind of getting into reading mainly as a way to avoid sleeping um i would just lie in bed all night with my light on reading and getting in trouble for it um and so i would like go into his when i finished like a book i would just go into his room his basic library which ran along the um on like a shelf along the wall and take the next one um mm. and that's where i would he would have like a number of short story collections by many different authors and i wish i could remember all the names because there were some really really good stories in those and that that for me is where i learned that i loved the writing of philip k dick like i, I know i've talked mm. about this before um yeah. that yeah where you've got you, you have like larry niven who would be like oh here is um i forget the names now but yeah th that's that's where my brain goes to when i talk about guy gets in spaceship and flies across to the other <laughs> side of space and has a cool adventure on like a ring world and there were some cool concepts in that in some of those stories but they were largely like space adventure and laser beams pew yeah. pew and like that kind of action um, kind of blockbuster film yeah exactly one. like be, yeah. yeah and that yeah again that's not to say like they they didn't cover some like more intellectual subjects but they they were like yeah man man gets in ship and goes to space and then you've got philip k dick who was like people well yeah like people just taking drugs that do weird impossible things yeah. um and I, I again they they all just kind of merged together um mm. but but they would be like compared to the other sci-fi stories at the time I was kind of looking for, they would be quite fantastical in their approach in that, say, it would be like, yeah, what what if people took pills that let them project their minds into, like, other onto other planets? And that's real. It's not like just a dream. Their mind is actually projected onto another planet and they can see and do weird things. And it's like, no, this is absurd. This is, this is, this is silly. This is impossible. Like, yeah, well, so is faster than light travel. Why is that? more acceptable to you than this we'll put that aside yeah um but what he was doing with those absurd uh premises is then using that to discuss like like the human the self um mm. like where like to actually make me the reader think about like the, what i experience as reality like yeah yeah, and and that that became a fascinating subject to me. It's not like, oh, what would happen if I flew in a spaceship all the way across space and met aliens? But how do I know that everything I perceive is real? 
And that became a far more interesting subject to me than, than all the other stuff. And that's where I was like, oh, okay, this is real interesting to me. I need to read some more of this guy's stuff. And that's where I got into that. And that probably wouldn't have happened if I hadn't had that sort of buffet-like approach to try yeah. all these different subjects and be like, oh, this is the one that I like. This is the one that, like, this is the one I can't stop thinking about when I'm trying to sleep. Not space yeah. adventures, but what happens when I sleep? What happens when I sleep and then I wake up the next day and, like, the the persistence of consciousness. How do I know that the me that wakes up the next day is the same me that went to sleep the night before? Sure, the me that wakes up the next day remembers it, but the me that goes to sleep now doesn't know that, and that's kind of frightening. And mm. that, that becomes... Sorry, everyone who's just realising that. Um, ask me about Star Trek transporter <laughs> technology sometime. Um... <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> what if everyone that comes no. out the other end isn't the same person that got in? Like, the one that goes in, you're like, you're dismantled down to atoms. Like, you, you're yeah. just, yeah, you are broken down to components, stored in a computer in the buffer, transmitted to the other end, and then reconstructed. The one that goes in could, is probably dead, but the one that comes out the other end doesn't know it. They're killing, like, dismantling and just killing each other thousands of times and just remaking them at the other end it's horrifying y'all uh try watching star trek now um yeah sorry american side note your school divisions are baffling and arcane to me but they sound very fancy i i've like i i don't operate in the same way as i think everyone else like i don't know lucy i'm, I'm assuming if i say to you like year three year five year 11 whatever yeah. that ma that makes sense to you uh no year no? 11 uh, 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 no I, don't know. I was i was like so pri primary school up until year six and then it was one two three again no me me i my i have pre-gcse gcse a level that is how i classify those times i mean yes also that but that there is no also for me that is literally it. if you say to me year three i have no idea how old that is like year three year oh. five year seven i have no i i do not know what year that is or how old i am at that time no clue huh. like i say i am pre-gcse your memory wiped or something <laughs> no I, I just i that's just not how i can think of it um so, so. yeah so it was yeah so year in primary school it's year one until six six you're uh 10 11 then you go to secondary school and it's year seven or in my case my school went from year one again um or first year um and you're 11 11 to 12 then then second year 12 13 third year 13 14 oh, yeah. which is Fourth year, I think, is GCC, or third year is GCC. I can't really remember. You see, this is the thing. I've done the opposite. I'm, I'm taking none of this. <laughs> I can't remember. Literally I can't remember when I did my GCSEs. I can't remember what, what age I was when I did them. No, no, G GCSE to me is 13 to 16. Um, a level yeah. is 16 no. to 18 slash 19. What? 16, yeah. 15. F fif well, GCSE. GC, oh, like no, no, 16 at the end of the GCC. 15, GCCs. 16, yeah. Like, Sorry, chat, we're just yeah. <laughs> but like this, old. this is This is my problem. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, so A-levels are aged like 16 to 17. 16, yeah. Yeah, 16, 17 to 18, 19. It's two 18. years. Um, yeah. Or, unless you're like me and did a third no, year. No, 16, 17 to 17, 18. 17, 18, yes, okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, you, you leave school at 18. Yes. Uh, unless you're me and you do an extra year because you've got Fair bad bad results in your second year but that's another matter um <clears throat> i what's my media studies is my media studies a level good no i think i've got a d yeah okay it wasn't that good so don't listen to what i say i'm actually uh provably huh? not that good on this subject uh, exams um, are rubbish. yeah um down with exams yeah oh man i made a really bad music video and so wait what Oh yeah, no, I no, there was no copy. It existed on one VHS, oh. which is now long gone. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. You should have kept it. No, I shouldn't. It was real bad. Yeah, um, oh, sad now. But yeah, I ended up editing videos now instead and doing, I would say, objectively a much better job than I did then. But I want, mm. I, I'd, I'd love for my teacher to actually see what I do now and be like, oh yeah, no, good grief. Um, 
but yeah, like I I don't have that like those granular categories. I I you can tell me a year, and I do not know how old students of that year group are expected to be. Like no nope, nothing. So yeah, Fair enough. Elementary, middle school, high school, local events for production. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we've got we've got primary, uh, secondary, and sixth form slash college, which is like sixteen to eighteen. Yeah. And then university. Yeah, college and university there. are different things. Yes, which is always very confusing for Americans. I'm going to college. School. Like... Also, school. Uh, I didn't realise that school tends to be, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, school tends to mean uh, university. Yes, I think. I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, it gets very confusing wow. when attempting to talk about higher education or even lower ed education um, mm. with Americans, because everything... School is just all of it. Well, that's even... <laughs> okay, fair. Yeah, that that sort of makes sense, I guess. I think but at uni, us, I did us... try to get people calling it big school. Big school. <laughs> it didn't take on, but I tried. No, I, I'm not surprised. Mm. Um, probably because they didn't want to feel like children again. <laughs> with just bigger problems. Yeah. Um, the word count just gets higher. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then, and then you have the extra fun granularity of things when you go to a non-typical university, when you go to a conservatoire, which is also known as music college, but it's not college, it's uni, but it's also not uni. I mean, it technically is because it's they're, most of them are part of a larger uni bracket, but it's just, it's just a nightmare. College and university are the same age. Technical differences between college and university. What? Right. Okay. Oh, okay. That sort of makes school. So you go from high school to university slash college. So you're 18 when you graduate high school. Graduate. That, that, that's so, I've never yeah. said a more American sentence in my life. Oh. We don't. We don't graduate. We don't get graduation. Why do Americans get graduation? We should we should get graduation for school. More, more ceremonies, more pageantry. Yeah. More oh, things God. to charge the parents money for. Yep. We just get sort of kicked out. It's like, bye now. Go on. Here's your results. Piss off. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Correct. Oh, okay. Ha. Huh. Cool. Yeah. Oh, it's raining again. I can hear it. Ooh. Yeah. Rain here just stopped. Uh, it was raining a bit there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. There are some excellent Halloween decorations around the village at the moment. Oh yeah, it's it's quite impressive. People have gone very very over the top with uh, cobweb spray. I guess I don't know oh, on yeah. bushes and things. And there was someone's house I drove past earlier that had. They they had sort of like a big pine tree in their front garden that was entirely wrapped, really quite high, impressively high up, with zombie zone tape, like police tape, but it said zombie zone on it in red. Cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's pretty good. Hmm. Colleges only give bachelor's degrees. Universities also offer bachelor's, but also masters and higher. Oh. Oh, you see, that's that's confusing. Hmm. Because unis for us offer everything. Yeah. Most of the time, I think. Yeah. Huh. And people just end up staying in higher education forever because they can't afford anything else. Yeah. I mean, gonna... they can't afford the higher education in the first place because student debt. But a bit of a sunk cost fallacy. Like the more, it, I, I, yeah. I, I, come on, I've got to, I've got to get a big job after this. Come on, let's go. Keep it, let it yeah. ride. Yeah. Student accommodation. Woo! Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's that's the true horror. Ugh. That's the truly scary thing mm. that you should be worried about this Halloween. Just the cost of living and life uh, and all of that. And on that spooky subject. Hmm? <laughs> but. Oh, yeah, actually. Mm -hmm. I think we should name our ghost um, thing. Uh, emote. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I mean, it's fine, like, <clears throat> as it is, it's just spoopy, but I feel like it's cute enough that it, it, it should have a name. Okay. Um... That, that isn't Jeff. Right. Um... What's what's a literary? I'll just call it Poe. We haven't read any Poe yeah. this October. No, we haven't. We should read some Poe. You vote Casper. I mean, that's quite a cliche name for a ghost. I reckon we can come up with something more literary. But also, Casper is is a good ghost name. I mean, it's it's solid. Got a master's in library science. Library science sounds amazing. Library. So anyone here who's read any Discworld novels, that just sounds like something the librarian would do. Have a degree in library science, but except it would be library magic. I like the idea of library science. <laughs> Super cool. The job prospects are terrible. Don't do it, lol. You're talking to a musician here. It's fine. <laughs> you right there, Sam? I'm thinking. You're thinking? Yeah. A what? Ghost name? Yeah. Um... Uh... First, first suggestion I got ready is Paige. Oh, Paige is pretty good. Um... Mm. Uh. Nope. No. I'm blank. I, I'm blank. Yeah, I'm, Page I'm... is quite cute. Um. Oops. Is there anything? What's the scariest, spookiest thing about a book or you could do to a book? Uh... Annotate it with pen. No. I've, I've done that. Why not Poe? Poe could be good as well. Poe or Page. Can we do a poll and chat? Doggy, I was thinking of that as well, but that feels like a mean, mean name. <laughs> page. Quite like pe 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 page, I think. Maybe. <laughs> well, on that cliffhanger. Yeah. Shall we? Shall we call it a bit earlier tonight? I I think so. Yeah, I I feel like I've like revved myself up for some of the discussions that we've had. And now I just and, and now I now I'm just like oh done and yeah, yeah like the the energy has now gone. Um, yeah, <clears throat> not actually yes, been coughing as much tired. as I thought I would be tonight, which is nice. But that's good. Yeah. Yay. Oh, nice. We've got Hill House on the brain today. Oh, that's that is another one I want to watch. Oh, Haunting yeah. of Hill House. Yeah. Apparently, it's very good. The Haunting of the House. Though, the <laughs> though, I would, I would probably have to watch it with you because <laughs> otherwise, I'd give myself nightmares. I think, I think I watched like an episode, maybe two. I'm not sure, and it didn't, it didn't immediately grab me. But I, I should go back to it. Uh, I, I think it's quite a slow burn. Yeah. So I've heard. So. Yeah. Notice, I said, didn't immediately grab me. I didn't call it bad. Mm. Very sad, but good. Yay, we like sad, but good. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I think I think we should probably wrap things up there. Um, yeah. But yes, thank you. Thank you very much for being here, everybody. Um, yes, indeed. <clears throat> this goes and for Lucy as well as you at home. Hi. Oh, goes for you. Hmm. I, yeah. Sorry, it's been a bit ah, today. Um, it's just been a bit like that. That's one that, of those days. Yeah, that's that's how we are at the moment. I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, um, I think we're both a bit frazzled. Yeah, just a bit. 
my camera just freeze? Yes, it did. Why? Camera. <laughs> Um, why why are you frozen oh dear oh it's because the battery's gone because i didn't plug it in i'm uh, an idiot well lucy's camera's had enough she's disappeared into the dark um so yeah (laughs) do you do you want to fix that or should should i just like Uh, you can can still speak that's fine the lights have just gone out in your room that's fine yeah hang on hang on okay yeah, it's going to be too much faff yeah. for me to sort it out right now. Lucy's been replaced by the EOS <laughs> webcam utility ghost. Uh, oh, has it? Yeah. Yay. Hooray. Excellent. Okay, I'm just um, going to stop virtual camera. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Where are we going to bounce? Um, we are. Well, replaced by OBS now. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you. Even spookier. Thank you very much for being here. Um, yeah. We always you know, appreciate, again, having people to like talk to frankly um yeah so, yeah turn out and give us give us an audience to to discuss things with um yeah thank you thank you very much um well, you're all journalist. wonderful andy and lady mephistopheles and the hat and lynn yes lynn was here um yeah and anyone else who's been been lurking or is going to turn up and watch the vod um thank you very much we are extremely grateful. Um, so yeah, we in theory will be back on Wednesday. Yep. Um, more ghost stories. More ghost stories because the mm. spooks don't stop just because October has stopped. Nope. Um, and I'll yeah I'll see how I'm doing. I I might try and get Dracula recorded um, this week and see if I can do that and hopefully get that up next week but we'll see should probably ask his permission first <sighs> can cameras record vampires probably not um yeah what what else am i about to say um oh yeah it, i think it actually so i think we have a band camp friday coming up because there was an email we do on the it is email. this yeah. friday um wonderful then so okay band camp friday this friday if there is no pressure um but if you were considering um picking up one of our story compilations from from the band camp uh we've not got a lot up there at the moment but we do have a couple and a new one should be going up real soon tomorrow that's real soon um that is real soon on so on on the subscription um or what have you then um yeah do please um i'm just gonna stick it in chat oh you're back hello Ah! Um, I plugged my camera in. Good job. So yeah, if if you want, as I say, there is no pressure. It is stuff that you have already heard uh, on here, or can go and listen to on the YouTube. We we do not want to yep. like segregate and like paywall new content. Um, we want everything to have been broadcast on here first because that's the f- fair way to do it. Um, yeah. But if you would like a higher quality uh, version to listen to. On like wherever you like, really. Um, Is my camera frozen? Um, yes, it has. Great. It has on stream. It just hasn't anywhere else. Um, how about now? It's an excellent. Oh, there excellent we go. face to. Oh, okay. okay, it might be because I didn't carry have, on with your. Might spiel. be because Discord wasn't the active window, so it's just bought. probably. Um, but yeah, if if you if you would like, if that sounds appealing or interesting, then um, yeah, do please do please go there and check that out. Um, yeah, we've got we've got. Uh, a bunch of Oscar Wilde stories, which mm-hmm. we read a while back. Yeah, uh, I think actually they might have been the first things we've read. No, they weren't. Frankenstein was not me. Yeah, for me at least. Yeah, um, we've got a set of M. R. Oh, James yeah. ghost stories. We've got, uh, and we got a, yeah, we've got another set of ghost stories coming tomorrow. Which are MR James, one MR James and various other ones. So um yeah. And I'd also like to do a, a big personal shout out and thanks to Lucy for doing all the editing work on them, which you'll say right now, oh it doesn't take any effort, but does it's take fine. there we go. Um but does take a lot more effort than I would be willing to put in. So I'm extremely grateful to her for doing that. Um That's right. But also, yes, we have a YouTube. Uh, which you probably know about, but if you don't, we have a YouTube where everything we've streamed on here has been archived. Um, yep. We have our coffee, uh, Ko-Fi Beats for you to listen to, uh, where we uh, are c- accumulating our... McGonagall! That's the one, I couldn't think of the word. 
Um, where, well, actually, I'm, I've not had any notice of donations and stuff on there, but if you want to hear us read some uh, William McGonagall poems. Am- amazingly silly poems. Amazingly silly, great poems. Um, then yep. go chuck us some money there, and we will eventually get round to reading some poems on one of these. They're very yeah. entertaining. Um, yes. Also, uh, back on the subject of Bandcamp and Bandcamp Friday, Bramwell Kites. Go and listen to Bramwell oh, Kites. God. That's Lucy's <laughs> thing. Um, some some very good, lovely folk songs uh, that Lucy has recorded with her friend Kit. Yep. Good. I'm glad that was correct. Um, I just think it, it was Kit, not anyone else, but yes. Um, yeah. But yes, they, they have some songs there if you would like some, some of those. Uh, I don't have a link to drop into chat, which is probably Are you going to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Yay. Wow. Self promo. Okay. Yeah. There um, you go. But yeah, go go click and uh, give that a listen. And again, like Bank Up Friday is coming up. It's a perfect time to to drop some cash on something. Um, Yay. But again, obviously, times are hard. Money's tight. Uh, there is no yeah. absolutely no pressure or judgment. Um, no. but it is purely a if you want to then that is the time to do it but yeah, yeah. Um, but all that all that said and done boy it's a big big long outro um, <laughs> we're going to go so yeah. think, have a good rest of Halloween indeed and good rest of the week and I guess we'll see you yeah. back here on Wednesday we will indeed thank goodbye. you thank you very much for being here and goodbye bye